Hello everyone and welcome back to Football Manager 2020 and the final part of this experiment where we're taking a look at what would happen if a non-league team had the perfect stadium and facilities in their club before we went quite far into the future uh, and if we have a look at their senior squad right now they are third in the championship having just missed out on promotion um, I've actually forgotten if they missed out on promotion I'm 99% sure that they did uh, indeed losing in the semi-final playoffs uh, but you can see there are some suggestions in the comments for how best to show potential ability and I've done that here with their under 18 squad you can see there's not much by way of great potential in this team 129 the highest one in the under 18s that's Jack Burke a 17 year old center back still at the club only just signed for them I'm not sure how long he'll be there uh, a year and a bit under his belt um, and then 125, Joseph Barley after that. Also still at the team, right midfielder, only coming the most recent youth take. A couple at 120, but they're just not going to become world-class players. Uh, if we have a look at their senior squad, you can see there's a bit more potential ability in here, including Enas Umari, who could become a top-quality Premier League player uh, with these uh, stats that he's got. £22.5 million signing for the club. Jimmy Fredericks, a central midfielder, the next one in, also a very good player. Started out at Arsenal, £4.6 million signing, St seems like a steal to me. Uh, Russell Block on loan from Arsenal, who are one of their feeder teams. Fernando, the left winger, um, he was signed on a free, but still got quite good potential in him, having previously been at PSG and Shakhtar and West Ham for a little time. Um, so a few players in there, but no homegrown ones really. But if we go to the shortlist, uh, the global shortlist, and sort it by homegrown status trained at Hemel Hempstead Town, this shows us all of the players that they've ever had on their books as a youth player. So looking right at the top here, sorted by potential ability, uh, you do have Ben McNamee, um, who is now at Fulham, £15.75 million. Pounds. He's got very good potential on him. Uh, he was signed in just his second season as a footballer by Fulham for 16k, went to Bournemouth for 20k, Everton for 9 and then back to Fulham for 50 million. Uh, so they made uh, had to pay quite over the odds to bring him back, but he's been doing a good job for Fulham since then. Then there's Scott Armstrong, uh, potential ability of 157. That's still just below the kind of elite player maximum level you could expect uh, but he was actually at Hemel Hempstead for a little while did very well for them league two league one and championship that run where they had two promotions and then he was signed by Aston Villa for 13.5 million to get him into the Premier League and he's done very well for them since despite not playing an awful lot of football uh, next up is Simon Watson same potential ability on him worth 60 million pounds now at Leicester uh, he was signed for just 450k. This is a problem with these players being raided from suck it, such a young age. Uh, he ended up at Brighton for 4.2. Leicester paying 44.5 million pounds from a lot of money there. Uh, another one that ended up at Brighton, Lee Warren. Uh, he was at Hemel Hempstead, 86k to go to Reading, and then they sold him in, sold him on in two years. For 27 million, a huge profit for Reading there as a championship club. He then went to Cardiff for a big loss uh, after one year with Huddersfield and then finally signed for Brighton, where he hasn't actually been that great for them, to be fair. Uh, Dennis Sinclair, uh, three players on 154 hit Dennis Sinclair, Skelton, and Rowbottom. Rather than click on every player, they will look for the ones with a high price tag, like Ken Rowbottom, currently worth 14 million, another one to leave at just 500k. Signed by Norwich recently for 17.5 million. Uh, there's also Simon Carter, also at Leicester. Two of them at Leicester. Uh, 81k signing. Huge profit for Huddersfield as he went for 27.5 to Arsenal. And now at Leicester as well. Um, well. Quite a few players in here worth a decent amount of money. you got Ryan Wright here as well. Uh, and then you get down to the likes of Barry Roberts. Uh, but there's just not many in here that are still at Hemel Hempstead. There's only a few left that are still at Hemel Hempstead, which is a really sad thing, but so many good players have come through their system. A lot of Premier League players. Uh, this guy's in Skybet League 1 with Crystal Palace, Andy Stockbridge. When did he end up there? Uh, he's one of the old school players, one of the first youth intakes, Andy Stockbridge. Uh, and he's bounced around a lot, 19.5k, two transfers at that value, then 155k, then 200k. 
uh, now at Crystal Palace in League One. Uh, he did make it to the Premier League and then has dropped down a league all the time, finally getting back up into League One after being in League Two. Uh, but not too much else to look in here. There are a lot of players here. If we do sort them by value just quickly, uh, you can see the most valuable players in here. But you're looking at hundreds of millions of pounds of talent coming through Hemel Hempstead's academy and going on to bigger and better things in the league. Um, so it'll be interesting to see where this ends up at the end of the experiment. What we're going to do today is go forward, I don't even know how many years, I'm going to let the database run for quite some time, maybe 50 years into the future, and we'll see if they manage to get to the top of the Premier League. Somebody in the last video was asking what the goal is. The goal is always to win the Premier League and Champions League. If we can get them to that point, that would be incredible, but I'm not going to go forever into the future to try and achieve that. So I think about 50 years would be plenty of time to see if they can do it or not. I am also going to bump up uh, their facilities. There seemed to be a consensus that was the right thing to do, so I'll make this 150, 150 uh, and get their facilities up to 2020 as well to make sure that they are fully set if they are going to make it into the Premier League and put on a good uh, challenge for the title at some point in the future. So if you have enjoyed this experiment, do drop a like down below, hit that subscribe button as well um, to make sure you get the next episode, next experiment rather than the next episode when that comes out tomorrow. Um, so let's jump forward 50 years and see how they're getting on. Well, we are now in the year 2093. We've actually gone 59 years into the future, I think it is. Uh, now, I'm not going to spend a long time looking at the fixtures through 50 odd years of um, different seasons but what we will do is just look at the first few from where we left off last time to see if they get into the Premier League and then once they're established in the Premier League we'll just look at the league table year on year on year uh, and we might also just quickly skim through the schedule uh, to make sure that they haven't won any major cup competitions along the way so looking where we left off last time in the championship you can see a bit of a patchy season for them uh, no success in the Cups. They didn't really do anything with their season. Just a nice ninth place finish, I think it was, that year. The following season, a good run of form through the middle to the end of the season, but not enough to make it to the playoffs. Uh, another very good season with a rough patch towards the end of it, but then they pick it up again with a lot of wins. Uh, and at the end of this season, they do make it to the playoffs. A thrill draw with Swansea followed up by a 3-2 win away from home, a 59th minute winner from Morgan Morton. And in the final, they lose on penalties to Wolves. A real shame, that one. The following season, though, very good form throughout the year. They do a great job. They make it to the playoffs. They beat Swansea 3-0 on aggregate, and then they win 2-1. Cosmin Bukor becomes the club legend by scoring two goals, including the winning goal in extra time at Wembley to get them into the Premier League. And as you can see, the Premier League starts off terribly. They do manage to get quite a few wins, but nowhere near enough. And they do end up going straight back to... Oh no, they stay up that year. I thought they went straight back down, but they actually stay up. And then the next year, again, really not doing well this time though. That is a long time with only one victory in there. And then the next one comes in the FA Cup. Get through to the quarterfinals, but lose 3-0 to Spurs. Uh, and then they definitely do get relegated that year. Back down into the championship where they totally dominate all throughout the year. Uh, no shock that they finish as champions. But then a little bit of a shock as they are totally outplayed in the Premier League. Get sent back down. Again, look at that start to the season. Beautiful stuff. Um, they do really well in the championship. Win it as champions again and end up in the Premier League. And this time they do manage to stay up. Uh, this season, the following year, they stay up as well, starting to solidify themselves in the Premier League. Uh, and they don't actually get relegated again. So what we're looking at now is the cup competitions. And then we'll have a look at their uh, league finishes year on year. So you can see they did make the FA Cup quarterfinals, 3-2 defeat that time. Uh, you'll know when they get into Europe because the European games will appear on this screen. Uh, but we're getting into the forty year ending 48 now, into the 40s. Nothing happening in any competitions at the moment. Uh, then they make it to the fifth round, lose to Chelsea. Getting into the 50s now. Uh, bear in mind this has been going on for about 30 odd years now here they make it to the EFL Cup quarterfinal they get through on penalties they beat Villa 3-2 at home in the EFL Cup and draw away from home their first chance of a major piece of silverware that isn't the championship title and they lose 2-1 to Man City 
a huge blow for them. The following year, having another run at the EFL Cup, they do beat Burnley in the semis to make it to another final, and they win their first major competition as a club. 1-0 over Arsenal. Ariton Sarau getting the winning goal for them, becomes another club legend. We've seen a few of them get made along the way, uh, and he's done absolutely brilliant there. It also takes them to Europe for the first time, and they actually do quite well in the Europa League here, uh, managing to make it out of that group easily. Through in the FA Cup before losing to Leeds. Now in the knockout stages, a 1-0 win over Ajax, home and away, 2-0 overall. A one-all draw with PAOK in the uh, quarter-final, and then they lose it on penalties. I can't believe they didn't manage to win that tie, so they don't make it into the next round. Uh, another EFL Cup run, though, before being smashed in the semis by Spurs. Um... The following year, a good cup run right to the semi-final, but beaten by Aston Villa 2-0. Again, another really good cup run, but beaten in the semi-final by Everton this time. The following year, terrible league form um, and no cup run either. Not the best year for them. The following year, through in the fifth round, through in the quarter-final 2-1, through in the semi-final 1-0. Can they win the FA Cup? They do! 2-0 over Spurs. They've now won the Carabao Cup and the FA Cup, fantastic stuff, uh, winning the oldest uh, cup competition in football, I believe the FA Cup is, um, and they've done it 2-0. Excellent stuff. Back into Europe, they win the Community Shield as well, so they've won all of the cup competitions in England after that 2-1 victory over Man City. Uh, another good run in the Europa League group stage, gets them into the knockout stages, a 2-1 win away from home, an important 86-minute goal there. Uh, followed up by a 1-0 win at home, gets them through on away goals, a very nice result for them. Then in the quarterfinals, they lose 2-0 to PSG, tough draw, 2-2 at home, but it's not enough, they get knocked out of the Europa League again. Uh, following year, nothing happening, apparently we've still got 30 years to go, I'm going to run through this very, very quickly. Uh, no good cup runs, they do make it into the final of the EFL Cup, but lose 3-0 to Manchester United that time. So they are getting to the last stages of some of these cup competitions. It makes me hopeful about their league form, um, although it does seem to be plateauing a little bit here. I don't know why that has messed up. There we go. I like scrolling down the screen. Um, but the 60s look like a pretty barren time for them trophy-wise. Out in the FA Cup quarterfinals. They do make it to another semi-final of the EFL Cup, but not far enough. They then lose in the semi-final of the FA Cup as well. Uh, and this time, they do make it to another FA Cup final, but it's a 2-1 defeat to Aston Villa. Two goals in six minutes there, sinking their hopes of a second FA Cup. Uh, and out on penalties the following year um, in the semi-final stage. And then nothing the year after that. Not a lot after that either. Um, another good FA Cup run. They do make it into the final, beating Liverpool 1-0. And in the final, they do win their second FA Cup against Brighton. An excellent performance from them. Uh, gets them their third major trophy in English football. They're back in the Europa League. They're through in the second knockout round against Napoli. 4-1 uh, on aggregate. They then beat Schalke 2-0 away from home. And 3-1 at home. So they're into the Europa League quarterfinals uh, semi-final, sorry, for the first time. And it's a one-all draw with Arsenal as well. Um, away from home in the first leg. Followed up with a 1-0 win at home. So they're into a European final. And they've won it 3-2 against AEK. I never actually thought they'd get this far with just this stadium and the facilities. But they've managed to do it. A 3-2 win in the final. Uh, an odd final opponent. But it means that they have won it. They lose the UEFA Super Cup though. The following season, but they get their first season in the Champions League as a result. They've never done this. Uh, and in the Champions League, they actually do really well getting through their group. Um, but in the knockout stages, a one all draw away from home against Benfica. Oh, and they've lost it 2 1. That was their chance. They just needed to win that game and they could have made it through. Um, so we're back to boring domestic competitions now. It says a lot that they haven't qualified for Europe without winning a competition. Um, so you know they've not done that well in the league. Again, nothing coming from this. It's just domestic season after domestic season. Losing to City in the FA Cup semi-final. But they've qualified for the Champions League. And they've not won a trophy. They've just done it themselves. They must have finished in the top four for the first time. 
Their league form looking brilliant as well. Uh, Champions League form patchy, but I think they've done enough into the EFL Cup semi-final. And then Juventus in the knockout stages. A nil-nil draw away from home and at home. Oh, 2-2. Two, two. They're beating on away goals. 77th minute uh, effective winner for Juve. The following season, no more Europe, but they do um, make it into the semi-final of the EFL Cup. 2-0 win followed up by a 2-1 win, but they lose to Liverpool in that final but they're back in the Europa League through the league um, and you can see they make it through the knockout stages against Atlanta then the quarterfinals against Chelsea then the semi-finals against Norkoping I'm not sure they're an established team <laughs> at the moment but they lose in the final to Lyon the following year still in the Europa League make it through again to the knockout stages uh, go out away from on away goals uh, to Zenit but into the Champions League. So they're, they're pushing the top of the table at this point. Um, and you can see knocked out in the first round, uh, first knockout round by Borussia Dortmund and no cup run. Um, into the Euro Cup 2 for the first time, but knocked out in the preliminary rounds against Nice. Um, and then out of the FA Cup quarterfinal. We're nearly caught up to the present day now. Nothing happening in the cup competitions they're into the euro cup two group stage this time and they do manage to get a few wins under their belt uh but then go out to craiova in the knockout stages which is an ideal the following year no european football whatsoever uh, and out in the semi-final of the fa cup again out the efl cup semi-final but they beat man, man united on penalties in the semi-final of the fa cup and then get revenge on aston villa with a 3-1 win for another FA Cup trophy. They lose the Community Shield, but they're back in the Europa League. Out of the semi-finals there. Threw on penalties in the FA Cup, but knocked out. But they beat Mainz in the first knockout round. Or second knockout round. Yeah, Europa League second knockout round. Where was the first knockout round? Was there not a first knockout round? That's unusual. Uh, anyway, into the core finals. 6-2 uh, on aggregate against Austria Vienne. They then beat Dinamo Kiev 3-2 in the semi-finals. And they beat Sevilla 2-1 in the Europa League final. Their second Europa League title. Uh, and they also beat Barcelona on penalties to win the UEFA Super Cup for the first time. Uh, clean sweep with their penalty shootout. Getting them through back in the Champions League. But not doing particularly well. They end up in the Europa League where they do manage to win the first round against Ajax. And CSK in Moscow are patched dispatched and then Benfica 3-1 on aggregate uh, they also beat Liverpool 3-2 on aggregate a huge winning goal there from Elliot Bandon and in the final they win back-to-back -back Europa League finals beating Celtic to get into the Champions League one more time they also beat Borussia Dortmund 1-0 to take another UEFA Super Cup and in the Champions League they're doing very well there into knockout stages PSG though a tough opponent beats them and that is the most recent season so that is where we got to on the cup competitions no real champions league glory for them unfortunately we will just have a look at the league seasons if we go back to where we kind of well where they got promoted effectively which is sometime in the late 30s if we start here yeah they got relegated that year the following year relegated again and the following year 14th in the league as they start to solidify 13th up to 9th pretty quickly there uh, but a mid-table team for many many years just bouncing about then they finish 6th but a long way off the Champions League places nearly get relegated that year uh, only well 9 points clear they were fine 11th 11th just I mean this is not an entertaining team to follow at this period in history then they start to become the new kind of second tier team in the league before being dropped down to 14th 16th 13th and then they climb back up for a little sustained period a nice sixth place finish where they're only just outside the champions league places and then they drop down again for a long period of time before finishing third so they go from 10th with 53 points to third with 68 points only just sneaking in there but a huge performance for them finishing in third place in the premier league huge sign of how far they've come then a nice fifth place finish as well. Again, fifth place finish, just missing out the Champions League. Then they sneak into it. And they were only 12 points from being domestic champion. Um, so unfortunate they couldn't get those four extra wins. Um, 
but it looks like they've kind of bounced back to their usual position. And most recently, they have finished up in sixth place. So no Premier League title for them, no Champions League title for them, but they've won just about everything else in their history. If we look at the past winners, oh, no, no, that's not what we want. If we go back and have a look at Hemel Hempstead and look at their competition history, you can see that third place Premier League finish at the top, three FA Cups, two UEFA Super Cups, three Europa Leagues, and then one at Carabao Cup, as well as all their league competitions, three UEFA Youth Leagues in there as well. But that is a much more substantial... I mean, look at that. English Under-18, Division 1. This will be all of their wonder kids coming through year after year after year. Um, and they've done a brilliant job there. If we just have a look at those, maybe the under-23s, you can see 150 at the top there, Paul Redshaw. And then the under-18s, 168 on this Justin Harwood uh, player. He looks very good. If we go to the shortlist uh, and then add condition, uh, and then we want, what do we want? We want training, no. Homegrown status, uh, trained at club. And then, is that trained at club? Yeah, trained at club. Choose other. And then if we just type in Hemel Hempstead, we will get a nice little look at their best players in the game. Sort them by potential ability. Oh, that's a lot of excellent players in there. Luis Ozulco, currently, well, he's 36 years old Colombian, but he is a brilliant player. Look, signed for them, though, actually, not from their own new system, but signed... And then sold on for 76 million after a brilliant time. He had a huge career at Manchester United afterwards. Uh, Paolo Roberto at Manchester United as well. Another one picked up. Great scouting network in South America, it would seem. And they're making a fortune for Manchester United. Remy Ibarmez, another one in there. Uh, poached from another team. Look, quite a few of them getting poached from another team. Maybe Josh Lloyd, 34-year-old striker at Bayern Munich. There we go. He's one that came through their own academy, went to Aston Villa, had a good old time of it there before going to Borussia Dortmund, where he really made his name currently at Bayern Munich, moving from Borussia Dortmund as well. Uh, two players, though, still at Hemel Hempstead. Uh, Marcin Wilk looks like the best one, left winger. Been at the club since he was a young boy and still there now, putting in excellent performances for them in the Premier League. So that's nice to see. They have kept at least one of these big players. But most of them have moved on. If we sort them by value, you can see there's quite a lot of players now worth over 20 million, 10 million, and then 5 million. So a huge number of great players in and around their team. But that is going to be it for this experiment. I hope you guys did enjoy that. Make sure to drop a like on the video if you're new around here. You can also subscribe if you're new to the channel. I will just do a quick little uh, change. If we go back to Hemel Hempstead and just edit the club details, we'll have a look at their facilities. Still got 150k stadium and their youth facilities down to 19. So that's it. Make sure to subscribe for the next experiment tomorrow. But until next time, see ya.